You're listening to The John and Heidi Show. Now, featuring the wit and wisdom of Dan Ferris. Okay, dudes, let's walk this sucker. On Sunny 93.3. It's The John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you in part by HauntedSiouxFalls.com. Oh. Be listening for a couple of fun opportunities to stop and pick up some Haunted Sioux Falls Super Packs this week. Haunted Sioux Falls Super Packs. Oh, they're that super duper. Awesome. You can't get those just anywhere. No, you, can't you cannot. get them anywhere else. You can only get them from us. That's right. It's kind of an exclusive situation. It is. It's a very exclusive thing. That makes us kind of a big deal. And it's a discounted thing, too. All right. Back in the saddle. Happy Monday there, Smalls. There we go. Everything honky dory, okie dokey, copacetic. Yes. Uh huh. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Birthdays today. He really did bring us just, you know, what we understand rock and roll guitar to be. And a little thing called the Duck Walk. Uh-huh. And he was featured in Back to the Future. Yeah. Chuck Berry. Boom. Ah. Chuck Berry. I love that scene in Back to the Future, which is I the only too. Back to the Future I've seen, was the because first one. Marvin Berry. Yeah, and where he makes yes. that phone call. So cute. Yeah. It's just, that just kind of cracked me up. So there you go. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah. Should start. Lionheart. I still will watch Lionheart if I trip across that movie. Yeah, a good which scene. I think was good, one of his first, first feature films, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. He is uh, 61 today. Is he really? Yeah, and making a fortune hustling Tostitos. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> the star of Patent. Not Patent. That's stupid. Patent. <laughs> wow, do I feel dumb. <laughs> and also one of my favorite classic movies, 12 Angry Men. George C. Scott. 12 Angry Men is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite movies. It's so cool. Yeah. Just shot in one room. Yeah, fantastic film. With 12 Angry Men. Yeah, it's great. Well, they weren't but a jury. angry, but some of them were a little cranked off. some point, yeah. Yeah, and in beautiful panoramic black and white. It is a, a fantastic cranked film. A little cranked off. <laughs> Was well, this day in 1867? We were just toddlers. Uh, Heidi, this is for you because okay. we were on the same page with this. This was a game changer. 1867. United States takes formal possession of the <laughs> island of Alaska. Uh, yes. From those darn Ruskies. Seward's Folly is what they called that. Uh, wrote a big fat check for the island of Alaska yes, for we did. seven point two. Million. And it was a bargain at that. It is a bargain. And apparently at some point we then had it towed. <laughs> to Canada for some reason. From off the coast of Texas. <laughs> and sewed it on to Canada. Right? See? There you go. Not sure what we were thinking there, but big, big day. 1921, a gentleman by the name of Charles Strite is granted U.S. patent number 1,394,450 okay. for his little invention. The automatic pop-up toaster, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, what a great invention. I yeah. actually watched a video on how that all came to be. Well, there you go. It was, it was Charles Stride. It was Chuck. day. Yeah. He got tired of digging the toast out. Yeah. So yeah. why don't we make this thing pop up? Yeah. And in 1931, finally, 1931, this day, Chicago businessman, or gangster, depending on... <laughs> the paper you read, Al Capone is convicted of tax evasion. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get a little more into Al Capone with the stuff I find interesting in just a moment. Because nice. some, okay. something just happened with Al Capone that was really? kind of a big deal. Okay. Yes, yes. So there you go. I know, you know, we all know, and we just bounce ahead. Going to do that. It is the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you in part by hauntedsufalls.com. <laughs> In the past year, did you find yourself drinking more often? The stress of the last year had that effect on many people. If you're struggling to get back to normal and get the booze out of your daily routine, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find the best option for you. There are many different programs. Timeforrehab.com will do our best to match you up with the program that will work best for your needs. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. We want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. And now stuff Dan finds interesting. 
It is time for Stuff Dan Finds Interesting. And Dan, what do you find interesting yeah, on this Monday? Just moments ago, mentioned that it was uh, this day in 1931. Uh, Chicago uh, heavyweight Al Capone convicted of tax evasion. Oh, yeah. Well, just last week, Dateline Chicago Associated Press Al Capone may have passed away like nearly 75 years ago, but it's pretty darn clear that he's still a pretty popular guy. Oh, why is that? They did a huge auction of stuff Al Capone used to own. Okay. Two of his... Uh, uh, surviving granddaughters apparently had accumulated lots of things that used to belong to him, hmm. including his favorite handgun. Oh. Yep. So last weekend, things were auctioned off. About 120, 130 people showed up, but there were literally hundreds and hundreds of people really from around the world on the phone right. bidding right. on things. The event... Uh, called A Century of Notoriety, the estate of Al Capone was held at a private club over the weekend. There were over actually a thousand registered bidders, wow. including the people that were in attendance. Uh, for instance, his favorite Colt 45 caliber semi auto pistol went for $860,000. That's a lot of dollars. Sure was. There were some other things oh. jewelry, clothing items, family photographs. All told, by the time everything was said and done, they hit a little north of three million bucks. Holy cow! Yeah. Al Capone. That would be kind of neat to go. Uh, I got uh, I got Capone's Colt forty five. Yeah, that yeah. would be kind of cool. Uh huh. Yeah. So, just, uh, huh. I thought that was interesting. interesting. It's not. It's not Michael J. Fox's hoverboard from. No, Back it's not. Future. Which doesn't even fly. fly, you know. But still, and I'm sure this gun doesn't shoot, John. <laughs> <laughs> Who would want to, really? <sighs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> My pleasure, that's, John. <laughs> that's why we refer to this as stuff Dan finds interesting. I'm John with a fun comparison. Some puppies are purebred and they cost more. Others are more affordable. And then there are free puppies. Nobody really knows where they come from, but they're free. In the advertising world, it's like that too. There are some super expensive ways to advertise if you can afford it. And there are some free things you've probably tried, but those dogs rarely work. Radio is kind of like that middle puppy. Affordable, will snuggle with you, and hopefully not pee on the rug. Radio advertising. Super affordable, a great investment, and man best friend try it and let better results advertising.com bring your message to life time now for your morning coffee break brought to you by Kaladi's bistro on the corner of 26th and minnesota avenue in sioux falls dan ferris what do you got for us man well let's see what's going on south dakota teach pays back in the news okay back in the news you know just a few years ago uh i believe there's a little sales tax a little one penny sales tax that got implemented why not that was going to go for more teachers pay across the state and then you know historically south dakota teach pay public school teach has been in the bottom rung when you look yeah. at all the other states in the union, but there's other things at play too. Cost of living, et cetera, et cetera. South Dakota does not have a state tax, for instance. But over the years, especially over the past 10 years, teach pay in South Dakota has actually gone up quite a bit. Right now, somehow, we're still ranked at like 49th. Okay. In fact, public average pay, public school teacher pay, the only other state in the union that apparently pays less across the board is Mississippi. Hmm. Really? And then it's us. And so, so then you start thinking, oh, our poor teachers, it, oh my goodness, they're suffering. Well, no, not really. Hmm. Not really. The average pay for a public school teacher, for instance, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, ain't too bad. It clocks in across the board somewhere in the area between 45000 to 53000 a year. I think that's really good. So that's the average. Yeah. That's the average. Yeah, I think so there's some really making more, good. and then there's new people that are making less. Yeah, depending on how long you've been doing right. it, or you take on extra activities, or are you also coaching the football team. I mean, it really yeah, right. depends. But for South Dakota, that that's a ain't really a bad good chunk living. of change. Yeah. Well, and, and what people forget about when and they, you get summers off. Yeah. What people forget about when they go our state compared to these other states, a lot Cost of other of states living. have many big cities and very few small towns. We have a couple of big cities. And many small towns. In those small towns, it doesn't cost hardly anything to live. It's very, very, very affordable. So I think that's part of the reason that that happens. Yeah, but do keep in mind that still looking for substitute teachers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All over the district. And that's, again, you can kind of call your shots. You can go or you cannot go, whatever. Right. But you, you make it's like 120, 140 bucks a day. Let's sign up I for think that. That's three really of us. great. And do you know what you need for an educational background? To Not do that? a uh, high school. You need a high school diploma. Yeah, you don't even need Was that. It, you don't need nothing. You need nothing. GED? You need, you need nothing? nothing? No. Really? No. no. Huh. No, I just, I like to drop by schools just on occasion. It's what I do. I'll just walk <laughs> into a school. 
<laughs> and I was, I swear, no, man, they were like Haitian immigrants teaching classes. So. Are they really? Oh, hey, how you doing? And they're like, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't think that's the case. Still <laughs> wearing a lanyard from the border. <laughs> it's nuts. Huh. Yeah, I think the three of us should sign up and be a teaching team. Do they do that? Oh, kind of a trifecta. Yeah, <laughs> we're working it. We all come shifts. together. The two of you could teach geography. <laughs> Show them the hey, island of Alaska. <laughs> we sure could, because it's on the map right at the front of the classroom. <sighs> no, but again, it, it all depends. When I see these stories about teach pay and whatnot, I always kind of step back a bit and go, okay, uh-huh. what, what are we dealing with here? Really? A lot of factors involved. Yeah. If the entire story is coming at you with, oh, it's, it's the worst pay in the country. Is like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Right, exactly. Hang on, hang on. I, think I love we'll teachers, by the way. Now. I just want to make sure we put that out there, too, that we're big fans. Big fans. I said, my daughter's a teacher. I didn't think that's yeah. what she was going to be. And that's not what she started out to do when she initially went to, went to, uh, What's it called? Oh, college. college. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, one of those places. But you know, uh, you know, I just go home for the you know, take the week off, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just so funny. She is so crazy. She loves her kids. and just adores her kids. But then yeah. I just point blank ask her, well, "What's the downside here?" Oh, <laughs> union administration. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And some parents. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, perfect gig. Yeah. Perfect gig. So. I bet. There you go. Well, very good. Thank you for coming in with that stuff, Dan. Oh, we'll have you back with some news. How's that sound? Oh, wow. I better get ready. Okay. He's gather some news. While he's doing that, I'm going to make a phone call. going to talk to a young lady from the uh, Aviation Across America group. I guess we've got a new proclamation for the state of South Dakota. We're going to chat all about that coming up. Many new students sign up for credit cards that are not very good. Have a conversation about how to properly use credit so they don't learn this lesson the hard way. At BetterCreditCards.com, we have credit cards that offer different things for different people. Want one that offers points? We have those. Want a card to help you build credit? We have those too. BetterCreditCards.com is designed to help you get a better credit card. See if we can help you find a better credit card card at bettercreditcards.com. Time now for a bright spot of news brought to you by Paul's Designer Showroom on Lake Lorraine in Sioux Falls. They can brighten any room with a beautiful light fixture. We're going to brighten your day right now with some positive news. I have Selena Shalad joining me from Aviation Across America, and we've got a really cool proclamation in South Dakota. Selena, how are you doing this morning? I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic. And I get this uh, email here talking about a proclamation that was made by the governor of South Dakota. It has to do with general aviation. This is your field. Tell us a little bit about this proclamation. Sure. Um, So it basically uh, proclaims uh, October as general aviation uh, appreciation uh, month and essentially highlights the role that general aviation and local airports play in in both the national and local economy. Well, that is very exciting for our state. And this is something that you know quite a bit about because this is kind of what you guys do at the Alliance for Aviation Across America, right? That's correct. So, you know, essentially, um, you know, aviation is an important part of our economy, obviously, and and keeps us all connected, uh, you know, large and small communities alike. And a lot of people have gotten on a commercial aircraft and they know the value of that. But and, and, and that is an important component of this, but general aviation, which is basically all unscheduled, non-commercial aviation that's non-military activity, is also an important part of that as well, whether it's, you know, rural access or supporting farms and agriculture, critical services like medical care, organ transport, all sorts of different uses. And so, you know, this proclamation and, and our work, you know, we really appreciate the governor doing this, and, and, you know, this is just an important part of our economy and important lifeline for communities, and this, this helps to highlight that. And when it comes to general aviation, the first thing that pops in my mind is, you know, uh, so, sometimes during the year we'll have uh, people doing agricultural aviation where they're spraying the fields. Is that one of the main general aviation things, or are there some other things that maybe I'm not thinking of, too? That is definitely an important part of it, uh, is agriculture and food production. And as you highlighted, it really is um, a lot of different uses, whether it's emergency, medical care, law enforcement, search and rescue, firefighting uh, during times of disaster relief. And, 
you know, it, it supports general aviation in this network of, air, of airports really are so critical for access um, for those types of activities and particularly during times of, of natural disaster and, and, and when communities are in need. But, you know, unfortunately, and unless you are kind of touched by that personally, many are not aware of all of that. And, you know, often there's a focus on kind of investing in large airports and a lot of the smaller airports and aircraft you know, people are not aware of, of the importance of those. As we were visiting here, I went to your website. Once again, that is aviationacrossamerica.org for anybody else that would like to read this. But right on the top, you'll see a thing that says proclamations and resolutions. When you click that, the very top thing on proclamations is the proclamation for South Dakota. And it's from the governor of South Dakota. And I'm not going to read this on the radio, even though it would be really fun. There's a lot of whereas and therefores, but it is the executive proclamation from the office of the governor of the state of South Dakota. And if you would like to read the entire thing talking about General Aviation Appreciation Month, you can find that at aviationacrossamerica.org. Thanks for putting it there, by the way. My pleasure, and and thanks for raising the awareness. It is aviationacrossamerica.org. And, you know, as you can see from the proclamation, it's it's jobs and enthusiasm and flying, too. So, you know, one of the things that we can't forget is that this is a lot of jobs that depend on these airports and aircraft and also that, you know, it's it's such a great thing in terms of encouraging young people to explore careers in aviation as well, whether it be as pilots or, you know, specialty technicians or working at the airport. There's just a lot of opportunity there, and I think this all helps with that as well. Selena, thank you again for taking the time to visit with us about this today. Thank you so much for having me. Again, this month is General Aviation Appreciation Month in the great state of South Dakota. I have a link to the executive proclamation from the office of the governor of the state of South Dakota. It's actually on the website, aviationacrossamerica.org, but I do have a direct link to it if you'd like to see that. It is at facebook.com slash sunnyradio and facebook.com slash Sioux Falls News. Merry Christmas! Oh, you're not ready for that yet. How about Happy Halloween? At WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, we help you get ready for all of the fun holidays throughout the year with funny, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we have a gift idea for them. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. That's WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Time right now for the newsiest news we do. It's time for news with Dan Ferris. We're not chew leather banging on desk demanding answers. You know, I kind of stray away from this, but I tell you what, it has been all over the news, so I may as well just kind of share it too. The dark, seedy underbelly of Sioux Falls. What's Uh-oh. going on? Murder rates through the roof. What oh, the what? Great. Bodies piling up like cordwood all over oh. town. It's crazy. That's too bad. A couple of men have now been in charge in connection with the stabbing death. Right outside of downtown. Well, it was right over by the banquet there, over on, uh, over on Eighth uh, and Indiana State Street. Yeah, Christopher Joel, uh, Christopher Joel Masso was found laying in the street, multiple wow. head injuries uh, earlier last week by the banquet downtown Sioux Falls. <sighs> they picked up two perps. By the way, Christopher has since passed away. Oh, geez! From the beating yeah. and the stabbing. Uh, police picked up 26-year-old, but do, 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 because they have been arrested, but, you know, not kind of trial or anything else. No names, but their initials are Stephen Tupa <laughs> and 28-year-old Jeff Poor. Mm. Arrested last week, charged with aggravated assault, bodily injury with indifference to human life, aggravated assault, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, <clears throat> these two ne'er-do-wells have a long history with the law. Rap sheets longer than the forearm of Abraham. Everything from DUI, driving without licenses, stolen property, drug violations, domestic abuse, vandalism. How about we quit letting them out? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of these things going back like five and six and seven years, mm, they did receive like 30 days incarcerations and then dismissed, dismissed and back on the street, back on the street. And that is part of the problem. But here's the thing. And again, we're talking, this is serious stuff. Two guys murder rap, that kind of thing. And innocent until proven guilty. But I saw their mug shots. <laughs> guilty. They look pretty guilty. Guilty. Hey, who wants to talk some sports? I do. I do. I do too. Brought to you by Burton the Crude Hockey Headquarters over at the Sanford Sports Complex. New and used hockey equipment, the best in the world in figure skating. 
to all kinds of NFL action over the weekend. I'm sure you were glued to your TV, switched back and forth to see who was doing what and why NFL was at week five, week six. I'm sorry, it was week six, the regular season. <coughs> Wins and losses clocked in right around mm, 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> Of course they did. But the big story, <laughs> the big story out of the NFL during a recent ESPN interview, Green Bay quarterback, insufferable quarterback Aaron Rodgers, has for some reason named the one team in the NFL that he will never play for. Now, keep in mind, okay. <laughs> keep in mind, he's been pretty cranky this whole past season leading into it with Green Bay from uh, ownership, management, and coaching. And next year, I mean, it's going to be free agency. He can actually go, hey, you know what? I think I'll bust a move here. Hmm. So he says, he says he won't, he will not. He has no interest in ever playing for a NFC competing team, Chicago Bears. Oh. Not that they've ever shown an interest in Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, but he just felt a need to say that he's not interested. In Glad that we know. Okay. For the Chicago Bears on a, uh, on a side <laughs> note. Bears. Rogers uh, did, of course, recently dump Danica Patrick for some actress no one has ever heard of and seems to think rocking a man bun is a solid fashion statement. So, <laughs> for those two reasons alone, he is dead to me. Yes. From the sunny 93.3 News Desk, I'm Dan Ferris reminding you of its news. You know what? It's news to me. Thanks for watching, especially Travis Ball from Foley Feeding and Plumbing. <laughs> Good night, everybody. In the past year, did you find yourself drinking more often? The stress of the last year had that effect on many people. If you're struggling to get back to normal and get the booze out of your daily routine, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find the best option for you. There are many different programs. Timeforrehab.com will do our best to match you up with the program that will work best for your needs. Learn more at Timeforrehab.com. We want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's Timeforrehab.com. Here's your Market Beat Minute for Monday, October 18th, 2021. The stock market extended its rebound Friday, confirming a reversal in the S&P 500. The index formed a head-and-shoulders reversal pattern at the 4,300 level and is on track to reclaim its recently set all-time high this week. The market should be supported by earnings as the Q3 earnings season kicks into high gear. But there is still a risk for stocks in the global supply chain issues plaguing the economy today. This week, earnings from Johnson & Johnson, WD-40 Corporation, Verizon, and Whirlpool will be in the market's focus. If they can sustain the trend of better-than-expected results, the broad market should continue higher. Also on tap this week, key reads on the housing market, the Fed's beige book, and the index of leading indicators. You can get the inside track from Wall Street's brightest minds delivered directly to your inbox every day at marketbeatminute.com. <laughs>